So I want to talk about this recent super using cheating scandal that's gone on on GG Poker. It's about a week after this has come out. It was first posted by somebody on 2 plus 2. And since this time, GG has actually come out and said that the person in question couldn't necessarily see the cards, but used an exploit where he could see the equities because apparently they used some sort of archaic Adobe Air type layout for one of their gimmick functions of like thumbs up, thumbs down. And the equities in a certain situation are, were delivered to the server. And somehow he was able to exploit that and, and see the equities. And of course, this reminds me of the whole UB scandal and the pot ripper thing. And obviously we've had many other cheating scandals, you know, throughout throughout the year. So let's just go into it here because this video is more going to be about how we can jump to the conclusion of cheating and sort of the math that goes into certain conditional probabilities, sort of if-then philosophy types of problems in certain situations. So this guy had apparently been winning like 90 big blinds or 90 BBs per 100 on GG Poker over 8,900 hands, which is not a huge sample, playing at 53% VPIP, which is just absolutely insane. He also won a $150 Sunday MTT for over $47,000 playing apparently a very extremely volatile strategy. So when you take a look at this, even within like an 8,900 hand sample, it's like, wow, this is an unbelievable outlier. Now, the statistics in themselves, you can't necessarily say cheating. You could come to the conclusion that the stats are such an outlier, so many standard deviations away from the mean that it's actually more likely to be cheating than to be straight. But when you take a look at even just one hand that was played, you can immediately deduce that there is cheating going on. And I'm going to sort of bring this back into sort of the Robbie and Garrett thing, as well as Mike Possel as well. So when I first heard of this, I was like, okay, let me see this sort of hand in question. So I'm going to bring up the hand here. And this is actually eerily similar to the situation that happened uh, at Hustler Casino Live. I'm talking about the hand. So this guy, Money Taker 69 who apparently that name is also like a name of some like hacking group. He is in the big blind and this guy Nizitan raises to 2.5 big blinds and Money Taker calls. Apparently Money Taker was only 25 big blinds to start the hand. And Money Taker has Jack Deuce offsuit. Jack of spades, Deuce of hearts. Nizitan has four or five of clubs. The board comes out Ace, queen, seven with two clubs. So Nizitan, the pre-flop raiser, flops a flush draw. Money maker, money taker just donks out with jack high for one big blind. Nizitan raises to 5.9 big blinds. And then money taker 69 calls. And right away, you're kind of scratching your head like this is very bizarre even right away. Okay, the guy's like sort of setting up a play or something like that. The turn is an offsuit six which gives the preflop raiser now a big combo draw because he's got four or five of clubs. So he's open-ended with a flush draw. And now money taker like donk min bets again for one big blind. <laughs> and Nizitan raises all in. So Nizitan raises all in with his combo draw. I mean, this would be like, I'd probably play the hand the same way. This is with bizarre. And money taker with jack high on ace, queen, seven, six calls he actually calls ahead of four or five of clubs. And this particular time, the club actually came in and Nizitan won. But when you take a look, or when I take a look at an unbelievably outlier type of win rate, and then I see this one hand, I'm almost 100% sure that the Money Taker 69 guy has some sort of information, whether he could see the cards or in this case, apparently he could see the equity. It's just quite, quite obvious. Now, it also brings it back to the thing, and we'll go into this more, you know, would this have even been, a, would the Robbie and Garrett thing have really even been a big deal if Garrett hadn't lost both times? Because of course, Robbie, it's a very similar situation. Robbie called with Jack High, where she loses to a lot of Garrett's bluffs. And Garrett happened to have a hand 
that she beats because Eric Garrett had a low combo draw, just like uh, Nizitan had here in this particular spot. So this type of hand, when you know a hand like Jack High has no showdown value, loses to any pair, loses to a bunch of bluffs, but then somehow you know, the one or two hands that it beats, like an eight, nine of clubs, four or five of clubs, somehow the opponent shows up with one of those hands coupled with the win rate, you almost automatically have to think uh, of, of cheating right away. Now, I put up a tweet right when this happened that I'm going to bring up here from a few days ago. And I said, I woke up this morning to see another possible super using scandal in online poker. When you see a hand like this go down and an insane win rate stat of 90 BBs per 100, it's, shall I say, very Possel-esque. And it's very Possel-esque. When I say Possel-esque, the thing about Possel was not only did he have this insane win rate, but we actually had a, a large culmination of hands that just strongly pointed towards cheating. I mean, I would bet my life on it almost. I mean, the, the chances that he wasn't cheating, uh, I mean, nothing can be 100% sure. Of course, I made a video examining some of the most suspect hands many, many years ago. I'll put a link to it in the description. But one of the things about, you know, probability is you can sort of figure out by flipping the odds around the chances of cheating or of not cheating. And when you have many, many different samples, you can sort of multiply them out to sort of figure out what the chances of something happening is, right? So I think some people really, really struggle with this sort of concept that are not in the gambling community. If you take an entirely random event, let's say the lottery is entirely random, like the Powerball is entirely random, and you have these large jackpots where someone's gonna win like a, you know, a billion dollars. And let's say that there's a, a billion combinations. I think it's like 800 million, but let's say that there's a billion combinations. Well, if they have more than a billion unique entries, the chances that someone is going to win is over 50%, right? If there's over, you know, a billion entries, but it's entirely random. So a lot of non-gamblers will come out and say, well, you know, the chances that this guy has a, of this particular win rate is like one in 10 million. Tell that to the uh, lottery winner, tell that to the Powerball winner. That's what my dad always says. And, and the problem with that argument, of course, is that these events aren't entirely random. And I'm going to give you an example. So I put up this tweet about a coin flip. And I don't want people to, because I saw somebody in the comments when I did a live stream sort of misunderstand why do coin flips come into poker. This is just an example of how something that should be random because of the result, we can conclude most likely with almost 100% certainty that it was not. So let's say a random person approaches you offering a coin flip bet. He'll call the correct side 10 straight times using the coin in his hand. So he's going to flip a coin 10 times. He's going to call the correct side 10 straight times. He says he's, he'll put up $1 to my $100. So he's saying, oh, I got to lay like one to 100 in odds. We know that the odds are actually more like 1,000 to 1. And the way that you can figure that out is it's just 2 to the 10th power. So we happily take the bet. I mean, that's a huge, huge positive EV bet for us, right? Okay. And then he proceeds to do it. He proceeds to uh, flip the coin and get the bet correctly. There is almost a hundred percent chance that you were cheated, that he cheated in some way. And that is because of the fact that he solicited you for the bet with the good odds, that he flipped the coin himself. You didn't in inspect it. If you were to go out on the street and randomly do this bet with a thousand people, there is a very good chance that one or maybe even multiple people out of a thousand people would be able to call the coin flip 10 times correct, correctly in a row. But that's entirely random. That's an entirely random uh, sample. And this is not. This is a guy that solicited you with his own coin. And I want to bring up a, a tweet that Scott Seaver said in response to this tweet. 
And I think this might have been like a quote from like Doyle Brunson or one of these old school guys, you know, something like that. He says, if a man says he can make cider spit out of the Jack of Diamonds' mouth and wants to bet you, the only thing certain is that you're going to end up with an earful of cider, which means if someone approaches you with a ridiculous bet, they're going to do it and the bet is basically rigged. So that's the thing in gambling when you have like a, an event that is so unlikely to happen and you have these other things that sort of support the possibility that the bet is not straight, then most likely, more than most likely, the bet is not straight. And then I followed up with the coin flip tweet by saying that this is the exact correlation that I see between insane outlier data and gambling supported by non-random evidence. Sure, one in 1,024 will be able to call the flips correctly, but this bet wasn't random. You were approached and he flipped his own coin. So sure, maybe one out of 100 million sample might have, you know, like a 90 big blind per 100 stat over a certain amount of hands, but how can you possibly not think cheating is clearly the overwhelming answer when coupled with this call with Jack High? Now, the thing with the whole Robbie and Garrett thing, obviously I was the commentator at the time. When I saw the hand go down, I thought something very, very fishy had happened. So did Garrett. Obviously he thought that he was cheated. However, different from the whole puzzle thing, there wasn't an extra body of supporting evidence, especially based upon the hands. In fact, I remember like a few hands before that incident with the Jack-4. She called with something similar. I don't know if it was Jack-4 or Jack-3 or something like that. And she was drawing dead. Like Garrett had already had a full house and she was drawing dead. And she had been on the show a few times and I'd actually commentated one or then I went back and watched all her hands. And I was like, there wasn't really anything that was possible as to suspect that she somehow had information or could really see the cards. The weird thing about that whole situation was that like if she was playing a $1, $2 game and you saw that call where she made a jack high call just sort of out of spite, even though it beat almost absolutely nothing, but it was at very, very low stakes, people wouldn't have thought that it was such a big deal. The reason why people, I think, jumped to a lot of conclusions right in the beginning, myself included, was the fact that no one really had ever seen her before that much, and no one ever had seen her play in such a large game. So when you see a hand go down like that, and it's on a live stream where obviously the cards are displayed, but it's on a delay, you immediately think, oh, these th something is very, very strange is going on. So that's when I came away from that night and I said it at the end of the episode and I got some flack for it. Like I, I didn't, you know, going back in my mental Rolodex, I didn't really see anything that suggested that really she, she saw the card. So I was kind of like 50-50 going away from the night. And the only time that I swung more towards like 80% of cheating was when the thing with Brian came out about the fact that, you know, he had taken $15,000 off of her stack. But as I've done in, you know, further interviews about the whole situation and we're over a year out, the fact that like no other evidence has come out, even though Garrett said that he would put forth other evidence, many, many people that claims that there's other evidence. And I just have seen absolutely nothing. I mean, you remember the outcry with like the vibration of the legs and all this other bullshit. I've seen absolutely nothing. For me, it's kind of like a time decay thing. When nothing else has come out, I am swung back to, I think it was just that she was entirely sort of green to the game and there really wasn't any type of cheating going on. The thing that you sort of have to wrap your head around though is that, <laughs> and I, 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 I remember saying this on Joey Ingram the night of and I was trying to be somewhat like diplomatic. She either had to be an unbelievable beginner to the game without like, the even most basic knowledge of the situation to make that call or she was cheating. There's no like middle ground. And again, I don't think she was cheating, but the people that came out and said, oh, she made a soul read. That's why like she called. That's just nonsense. If, she, if there was no cheating, which I don't think went on, 
it's because she didn't really have a fundamental understanding of the game. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not, I mean no malice in that. I'm just stating my opinion as a professional poker trainer, professional commentator. And I, I think that's really what ended up happening. But there is no like experienced player that makes that call. It's too in between. It's because, you know, she is a, a beginner. She was a beginner. But the whole purpose of this though, like when you take a look at the possible thing, and this is how you can do odds of, of a certain situation. Like if you were to say, well, I'll take a look at this hand and okay, maybe this one hand in a vacuum, maybe there's a 10% chance of cheating going on. And then we have another hand, maybe there's another 10% chance of cheating going on. So it's kind of like if you were to have nine numbers covered on a 10-sided die, like there's 10 sides of a die and you get nine of the numbers. What are the chances that you'll win two rolls? when you have 90% of the numbers. It's 90 times 90, 90% times 90%, it's 81%. Well, the chances of you win three rolls, 90, 90, 90, 72%, and so on, and so on. So if you have a sample of say 50 hands where there's 10% cheating, you can play that out and it's like 90% of not cheating to the 50th power, what do you get? you get it pretty fucking close to 0% not cheating, which flips around being almost 100% cheating. That's what the whole thing with like the whole possible thing, but that's not a parallel to, um, to this Robbie thing. But with this particular situation, just, just the win rate plus that one hand is almost 100% cheating in my eyes. And then just finally, I'm sure that this wasn't his intention and I guess I'm just going to have to pile on, but I'll pull this up. Mason Malmuth popped into that two plus two post and uh, basically was sort of like plugging his book and was talking about how there's a chapter in his new book, um, Gambling Theory and Other Topics, expanded edition about how you can possibly identify a cheater in a situation like this. And at first in the thread, he was saying, we can't just jump to any conclusions based upon the stats. And people were like, are you fucking out of your mind, Mason? How about the stats and this one hand? By the way, there were other hands too. That's it, a reasonable person. It's almost 100% cheating. Just the win rate and that one hand. It's online poker. Now, later we find out that there are more people apparently like this in GG that had these crazy, crazy stats. So this wasn't necessarily um, an isolated incident, but man, online poker with, you know, Real-time assistance, bot farms, the possibility of cheating. I just don't know if we can really ever come back from this, or I don't know how anybody would really play online poker for any serious money when you don't know who you're playing. They could be using a computer to help them. It's like playing chess for money. You're not going to play somebody in chess for money with like a, who you don't know who's claiming a certain rating because it's so easy to use a computer to help. I mean, online poker might actually go the way of chess where maybe it will only be heads up and maybe, I don't know, there'll have to be some sort of webcam to prove that you're not using computer-aided assistance. But once again, unfortunately, a little bit of a, of a stain here in the entire poker community.